Have you ever picked up your favorite sativa strain from the dispensary only to come home and find it oddly sedating? It's not you. The dominant terpene was probably Myrcene. I'm Catherine Goldberg, and let's continue our conversation on the science of terpenes. Last week, we talked about how this sativa indica hybrid model doesn't really do us justice. And a smarter way to think about cannabis is in terms of the effects. One of the things that determines the effects of cannabis, whether it's, let's say, sedating or energizing, are going to be the terpenes. Terpenes aren't the only thing that determines how cannabis affects you, okay? Uh, Cannabinoids, THC, CBD, minor cannabinoids, THCV, CBG, we'll get into this, not on this episode, of course, play a role in the high. Your own biology, um, your digestion, your gut microbiome. This is why, unfortunately, one size of cannabis doesn't fit all. But what I found is that the more I dig into the terpenes, the closer I get to finding the high that I want. So in our last episode, we talked about that there are three kind of main buckets of terpenes, right? Um, Myrcene, terpinaline, and limonene. And for the people who say terpenes only determine the flavor and the aroma, that's not true. Um, Terpenes modulate neurochemicals and neurotransmitters that determine the effect of the high. Other people have said, well, if lemonine is so energizing, why don't you just eat a lemon? There is a difference between inhaling terpenes and cannabinoids and the other things in cannabis versus the process of eating, swallowing, and digesting a fruit. Um, there's going to be a much more profound effect in the inhalation versus the digestion where a lot of these volatile molecules, these terpenes get broken down. Um, so I think we are set on that. And just to do a recap, um, if you're into terpene science, I suggest you watch the previous video. I think it's really interesting. Um, why is myrcene typically sedating? It's because it acts on GABA. It makes our neurons more sensitive to GABA. GABA is like the braking system for the nervous system. Um, the nervous system is basically like stop and go. Um, so a terpene that makes neurons more sensitive to GABA is going to have a sedating effect. Um, it's going to have an anti-anxiety effect. Um, muscles are going to relax. If you look at a ter- terpene like terpinaline, um, terpinaline acts on dopamine and adrenaline. And if you have ever had a really, really racy sativa, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, And lemonine um, basically allows more dopamine and serotonin to stay in between neurons for longer, which sort of explains this combination of feeling good, pretty content, a little blissed out, Um, And it makes sense, these three buckets, right? Um, There are four more terpenes that I'd like to discuss today and their mechanism of action. And I'm hoping by the end of this conversation, you'll, at the very least, when you find a strain that you're interested in, either scan the QR code to get the COA or ask the bud tender what are the dominant terpenes or I see a lot of brands um, writing it on the label because a lot of us are interested in that. So as you guys know, I like more of the clear headed energy strains. So let's continue this conversation um, on pinene. Pinene um, works on the, okay. So pinene is good for learning and focus, which are often counterintuitive to cannabis. However, Pinene allows more acetylcholine to stay in the neurons longer. Acetylcholine has to do with focus and learning. Um, Pinene also acts as a bronchiodilator, meaning that it allows the lungs to expand more. And I mean, 
common sense dictates the, the more oxygen in your lungs, the more it will get into your bloodstream and then your brain and your brain will function better. Um, so that's why a lot of strains that have are high in pinene are, um, I'm not going to say energizing, but are clear headed and they're easy for me at least to do work on. Um, let's talk about the other side of the spectrum, kind of going more towards the mercine effect, which is linalol. Linalol also works on the GABA system, relaxing the nervous system, but unlike pinene, it influences glutamate, which is another neurotransmitter responsible for creating memories. Um, so it's interesting that some strains can, um, we know that THC somewhat impairs new memory making, but paired with pinene, it may help you remember more and paired with linalol, it may not solidify those memories. Pretty interesting. At this point, I think you'll get the idea that if you're looking for an uplifting energetic strain, you're going to want to stay on the terpinaline, pinene, lemonine side of the spectrum. And if you're looking for a more relaxing strain, you're going to look for those myrcene and linalol strains. Um, there are two other cannabinoids, not cannabinoids, I'm sorry, terpenes, that work a bit differently. Um, because so far we've discussed like neurotransmitters and how these terpenes affect the brain to create the effects we experience. But beta carophylline is becoming everyone's favorite terpene. And it actually acts on the endocannabinoid system itself in the CB2 receptor. And CB1 is responsible for the high and CB2 is um, responsible for reducing inflammation um, throughout the body, especially in the gut. So beta carophylline is pretty interesting because if it's paired with, let's say a myrcene or a linalol, that could be really good for like nighttime pain relief. But if you're looking for daytime pain relief, that's not sedating, you might want to look for something that's high in beta carophylline and also high, let's say in lemonine, terpene, um, or pinene. Um, it can go both ways, which I think is really exciting because now we're getting into the whole part of being able to customize our cannabis experience. Um, we have one terpene left, humulene. Humulene, I thought, I kind of wrote it off as already understanding it, but I learned something new. Humulene is often credited to reducing appetite. It's often found in strains that are high in terpinaline. Um, it's often found in strains that contain the cannabinoid THCV, which also, besides improves focus, um, reduces appetite. Um, but besides just the appetite suppressant, it actually controls like the gene signaling for one of the master switches to turn on the inflammation process. So when you inhale a strain that's high in humulene, you are actually taking preventative measures so that the inflammation process doesn't begin in your system, or at least not to the whole, the same response as previously. Um, so again, beta carophylline and humulene are neither energizing nor sedating because they don't work on neurotransmitters the same way, but they have these pretty profound effects when it comes to pain management and pain perception. Um, so I hope you guys found that interesting. I find this really interesting to be perfectly honest. And um, I'm curious, like what terpene combinations do you look for? I get most people smoke weed to be relaxed. I get it. Most people are happy with myrcene and linalol and whatever else. I am one of the growing number of people who use cannabis throughout the day to focus, to be productive, to work out, to read, to learn. Um, I want strains that promote those things that I'm looking for. And I'm thankful they exist. You just have to kind of look for it. Um, in the next episode, we'll start going into the science of cannabinoids and how those work. 
Um, I just think personally, I'm in the school of thought that says terpenes are going to influence the effects of cannabis the most for me. So when I'm out shopping for cannabis, I'm looking at terpenes before I'm looking for how much CBG is in this plant. Um, that's not to say CBG isn't cool. And we'll talk about that next week, but terpene science is really cool. And next time someone calls it like just a bro science, I hope you'll watch my previous video and learn some of the neuroscience as to how this works. So thank you for joining me and I'll be back next week.